Hello everyone. I hope that you don't mind the messy background in this video. Uh, we, my wife and I, just moved into this new apartment yesterday and most of our stuff are still in boxes. But I thought I would take a break from unpacking and organizing to uh, record this video. And I want to talk about an important book, a book that is important for me, and a book that is very easy to recommend because I think for most of you, if you enjoy my channel, if you, if you like my videos, then you would definitely, almost definitely, will like this book and will appreciate this book. The book doesn't um, require much background in philosophy. And in fact, I would say that the book is one of those books that becomes uh, part of our background. It becomes something that we will think about when we encounter other situations, other books, other theories. Um, so I assume that you would that you are you have some interest in thinking philosophically about life philosophically psychologically you enjoy reflecting uh, on life and you enjoy maybe the metaphor of games that this is something that intrigues you thinking about life and thinking about activities as a uh, as games or using the model of games games the metaphor of game or a model of game is very useful because it highlights some things that we wouldn't necessarily think about without this model. When you think about games, you more readily think about how you're relating to other people. You think about, about yourself as a player among other players of a game. You might also ask, what is the purpose of this game? You can think about when will this game finish? Or uh, how should we think about different players based on their ranking, based on their skill? How should we think about the different players in this game? And uh, this book offers many interesting tools, conceptual tools and distinctions in thinking about games and, and players. As the title suggests, the big divide between different types of games is identified as a, a distinction with a distinction between finite games on the one hand and infinite games. The book begins by saying that there are at least two kinds of games. These two major kinds of games are called finite games and infinite games. The two kinds of games are different from each other uh, as uh, well, in terms of why they are played. A finite game is played to identify a winner and, and losers or winners and losers and it has a distinct end point but infinite games they don't have a distinct end point and they are not played to have winners and losers. An infinite game is played for the purpose of continuing to play. So that is a major difference between these two. I should also mention in passing that there is a very important feature in common to both of these two types of games. They both depend on the freedom of players and their choice to participate in these two games. If there is no freedom, there, there is no game. As James Cars puts it, if, a, if somebody must play, if somebody is forced to play and has no other alternative, there's no choice of not playing, then the person cannot play. Only if you choose to play, then you are a player. So I, I, said, I mentioned that in passing, and then we can set that aside, because that is something that is in common. Both finite games and infinite games, they both depend on free choice and the freedom to participate in the game. If you must play, you cannot play. A finite game and infinite a finite game and an infinite game are different in terms of how we relate to each other. In a finite game, we are competitors. We want to become better at each other. We want to train. And we don't want to be surprised by the moves that other players make. But in an infinite game, we don't have a problem with being surprised. We don't have a problem if somebody is better than us. Uh, we want to laugh. We want to enjoy. We want to celebrate the fact that we are together and we are playing together. Um, so other than the relationship with each other that is different across these two games, relationship with time is also different across the, the two kinds of games. A finite game is heavily oriented towards the past because we want to train and be better based on the rules and strategies and techniques that have been established in the past. A game like a game of chess or a game of Go, the rules are determined in the past and you want to learn the rules, you want to learn the history of the game and you want to play it as well as possible based on that history. 
you don't want to be surprised. You want to be, and this is, I'm going to talk about another concept that is introduced in this book. In James Carson's terminology, in a finite game, the goal is to become a master player. A master player is somebody who will never be surprised by other players. And at the be very beginning of a game, a master player already knows that the game is finished and that he or she is already the winner. Because everything is determined, in a very important sense, a master player is not really playing because there's no there's no sense of surprise or unpredict there's no unpredictable element and there's no sense of play um i will say one more thing uh, just uh, to to end the video to, to entice you everything that we can think about almost everything we can think about as a major activity every every major part of human culture think for example of religion of art of, of science all these major types of activities, categories of activities, could be played as a finite game, as a kind of competition, as a kind of uh, game to gain rewards, to gain prestige, to become a master player, to, to beat other people and to silence other people. Or it could be played, all these major activities, they could also be played as, infinite, as an infinite game. And the goal of an infinite game is to not suppress people, other people, not to prove that you are, you are good, that you are skillful, but instead to try to expand and continue the game, to include as many people as possible. To not play just according to the rules, according to the boundaries, but to also play with the rules and with the boundaries. That is a uh, characteristic of an infinite game. And when you do science or art or religion as an as an infinite game, you're not too worried about you're not worried about uh, identifying who's a bad player, or who who doesn't belong here, who who should be excluded. These are all characteristics characteristics of finite games, games that are for the sake of winning and losing. James Cars says that uh, at the end of a finite game, the master player or the winner, the big winner of the game, gives a speech, and it, the feature of this speech is that it, it's not like a Q and A. It doesn't include other people. I, imagine like somebody who has won a big prize and goes to the podium and gives a big speech, and that speech invites silence from other players. So this is a, a feature of uh, this is something that happens as part of an, a finite game. A key insight is that. A finite game is embedded or is played within a larger context of an infinite game. So it is the infinite game that gives life to finite games. I think that's good for now. I don't want to, uh, this video to become too long. Uh, finite and infinite games, a great book. Um, it's a good thing to have in our uh, bag of um, philosophical insights, philosophical toolbox. And uh, if you read the book or if you have read the book and have some, some thoughts about it, feel free to share with me. Uh, otherwise, I will speak with you in the next video, hopefully with a nicer and more organized background. Thank you for your attention.